Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. Few months ago I covered a 10.1 inch SDM32 embedded display from Rividi. Rividi makes these displays around the SDM32 controllers, so we get the performance of SDM32, with a stunning display design and smaller form factor. We can use the Touch GFX to design the UI, and the Cube ID to write the code. So far they made these displays around the H7 series MCUs, which has its own advantages like high RAM and flash capacity, high performance, dual core capability, etc. Recently Rividi sent me a 5-inch display, which is from their new lineup, and is built around the STM32 U5 series controller. This display has a 5-inch TFT LCD screen, with a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels, and the STM32 U599, or U5A9 microcontroller. The U5 is itself a new series from Street, and it features low power utilization with high performance. These microcontrollers come with a 4 MB of internal flash storage, along with a super huge 2.5 MB of RAM. We can basically save an entire frame buffer in the RAM itself. Here is how the display looks in person. At the back we have the port for the USB, FD CAN, RS485, SWD, power port on the right, a rebus connector, an expansion port, a micro SD card holder, and a coin battery holder. Here is the power connector, where I am only using the pin 1 and pin 6 on the connector. I am using a 12 volts 1 ampere adapter to power the board. Let's connect the power supply to the board now. I tested this display, and I must say it is quite impressive. It overcomes all the issues I had with the H7 based display that I tested previously. Basically we can flash the entire project using the cube ID itself, and we can also regenerate the code from CubeMX without any major issues. I will cover these points in the video, where I will regenerate the project from CubeMX, and then flash the code to the board. I will also show how to load this game to the board towards the end of the video. Let's start the Touch GFX, and create a new project. I am using the latest version available at the time of making this video, that is, version 4.21.4. .4. Click on Create New, go to Partners tab, and select the 5 inch display. Give some name to the project, and click Create. I am fast forwarding the designing part as I have covered it a lot of times in the previous videos. Basically I am adding a background image first. Then adding a gauge, and setting the value range from 0 to 100. Next add a text area to display the value of the gauge. Add a wild card here, so that we can set the value on the fly. Let's add one more text area to display the voltage on the ADC pin. We will add another wild card here too. Now go to the typography, and add the wildcard range. That's all for the design, let's generate the project now. Open the files, and open the project in Cube IDE. You can actually flash the project directly from the Touch GFX itself, but it won't run. I will explain this in the cube ID itself. Here you can see all the peripherals are pre-initialized when the project is generated. The project flashed from the touch GFX doesn't run because of this initialization. Actually when there is no SD card in the slot, the SDMMC initialization fails, and the code halts at that point. So we need to comment this out, or otherwise you insert a micro SD card in the slot. Rividi engineers know about this issue, 
and they told me that they have fixed it in the new update. So hopefully when you will purchase it, it will be fixed by then. Anyway I need to leave it commented out for now. I haven't flashed the project to the board yet, and I will do it directly from the ID itself. The code builds without any errors, but we need to edit the debug configuration. Go to the debugger tab, scroll down to the external loader, click on the loader and click edit. The debugger shows the error that the loader is not found, but this loader is present inside the cube programmer directory. So we will just set the location of the loader. In my case it is present inside program files, SD microelectronics, STM32 cube, programmer, bin, external loader. Browser for the external loader and click OK. Now flash the project to the board. The project has been loaded successfully. So we were able to load the project from cube IDE itself, now we will regenerate the project from cube MX, edit the code, and flash it again. Basically I am going to use the ADC to read the potentiometer, and update the value on the gauge and the text area. Let's open the cube MX. In the meantime, let's see the datasheet of the display. It supports a wide range of voltages, from 6 volts to 48 volts, and as I said I am using a 12 volt adapter to power this display. Here is the pinout for the power port. I have connected the VCC to pin 1 and ground to pin 6. We have the pinouts for the RS485, FD CAN, and the SWD. Here you need to connect all the pins to the respective pins on the SD link. All right here is the pinout for the expansion connector. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to use the ADC to read the potentiometer. The pin 2 is connected to the VCC, which is 3.3 volts, and pin 6 is connected to the ground. The pins 20 and 22 are assigned to the ADC1, and they can be used in the differential mode. For the potentiometer, I will use the pin PA7 in the single-ended mode. I have the potentiometer, which has the red wire for VCC, black for the ground, the white is not connected, and the yellow wire is the ADC out. Here you can see the expansion connector has the pins numbered on it. This entire row has the even numbered pins, where we will connect the potentiometer to. Let's connect pin 2 with the VCC, pin 6 with the ground, and pin 20, that is PA7, with the ADC pin. Alright everything is set now, let's open the cube MX. Go to analog, ADC1. Here you can see the channels 11 and 12 are being used in the differential mode. Let's disable it. The pins PA6 and PA7 are switched to no mode. Now I am enabling channel 12 in the single-ended mode, and this sets the pin PA7 in the single-ended mode. Let's configure the parameters now. I want the ADC resolution of 12 bits. Here the VBAT channel is set for the rank 1. Let's change it to channel 12 as we don't need VBAT for now. That's it for the configuration. I haven't enabled the interrupt, as we will measure it in the blocking mode itself. We also need to create a task and a queue to measure and send the ADC data to the UI. I am creating the ADC task with normal priority. And for the queue, I am configuring it to have 5 elements of integer size. That's it for the cube MX, click save to generate the project. The STMMC is being initialized again, so let's comment it out. You can confirm the changes in the ADC source file.
Our task and queues are defined in the FreeRTOSS file. In the ADC task, we will first read the ADC value. We also need to define the ADC handler as an external variable here. This map function will be used to map the 12-bit ADC values in the range 0 to 100, so that we can send them to the UI. This file is from my test project. So we start the ADC, poll for conversion, read the value, and stop the ADC, the typical process to read ADC values. Then map the ADC values, which can range from 0 to 4095, to the values 0 to 100. Now we will check if there is some space in the queue. If there is, then send the converted value to the queue. Now we will read the queue in the model, send it to the presenter, which will send it to the view. I have covered it a lot of times already, so I am fast forwarding this part also. We check if there is some data in the queue, and if there is, then read the data, and store it in the variable. Define this variable in the model header file, and make sure to include the types header file, so that it can identify what integer type is. In the presenter, we will call another function in the view. View is where we will actually send the data to the UI. First convert the integer value to the ASCII characters, and store them in the text area 1 buffer. Invalidate the text arrow 1, so the changes can take effect. To convert the float values, we need to use the SNPrintf float function. I will modify this code in a while, for now I am just setting the value variable here. Finally we will set the value to the gauge. Alright let's build it to see the errors. There is an error for the ADCQ handle. Let's include the cmsysos2 header file. Alright you will see these 7 errors when you build the regenerated code for the first time. To resolve it, go to the touch GFX, and regenerate the project from here. Now rebuild the project, and those errors should be gone. Those errors are gone now, but we still have one error, and that is about the ADCQ handle again. It should have been an external variable. Alright all the errors are fixed. I still need to convert the ADC value to the ADC voltage. Let's define a float variable to store the voltage. A value of 100 corresponds to the voltage of 3.3 volts. So this should do the job. Alright let's flash it to the board. Here you can see the gauge is responding according to the potentiometer, the text area 1 shows the gauge's value, and the text area 2 shows the voltage on the ADC pin. So we were able to make the project work even after regenerating it from the cube MX, which is quite convenient. Now before I end this video, let's see the game I was playing in the beginning. Go to touch GFX. Click on Demos, now choose the board. 
Here are the available demos you can use. I was playing this night hits zombie. But let's upload this dice animation this time. Click create to create the project. Generate the project. I still need to comment out the SDMMC initialization, but I don't need to open the QIDE for that. Just open the main file in the project folder, core, source. Now comment out the SDMMC initialization, and save the file. Now I will upload the project directly from the touch GFX itself. You don't need to do this on the newer boards which are available on the Riverdy website. They sent me an old unit with old firmware, so I have this issue. Alright you can see the animation now. This is it for this video. We saw how we can flash the project from the touch GFX, from the cube ID, and we can even regenerate it from cube MX. This was the issue with the previous Riverdy display I covered, but this time I am impressed. I am even thinking of continuing the Touch GFX series on this board itself, so you might see more Touch GFX videos on this Riverdy display in the future. Also there will be more videos coming up next covering the LVGL on the Riverdy display, and another covering their PoE, the Power Over Ethernet module. You can purchase the display, or order a sample unit from the Riverdy website. The link to the website is in the description of this video. I will also leave the link to download the code in the description. That's it for today. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.